also something that patients are very scared about, especially when they come to a, a different country. They're not familiar with the medical system here. They're not familiar with the hospital. They want to know if the hospital and doctor are very well prepared for postpartum hemorrhage. Yes. And also notice like uh, in Hulk, if they're Asian and with other risk factors, they will put uh, another needle. They yes. said Asians tend to bleed more. Yes, they have a... Um so for postpartum hemorrhage, um, unfortunately, that happens. Um, so we're always watching that. Um, and yes, Asians do have a higher um, chance of bleeding. So um, we commonly will put in a second IV, just all in preparation. Um, they have packets ready with the medication that we need in case someone's bleeding. Um, but there's a whole protocol to find out why they're bleeding. There's multiple reasons. They may have uh, a tear in their cervix, um, and that can be repaired very easily. Uh, it may be, and as commonly, um, the uterus is not contracting like it's supposed to. Uh, but before you assume that, you make sure there's no tears. You also make sure there's no retained tissue inside. Um, if the uterus is relaxing, um, like I said, we are always ready to go with medications um, that we use to help contract the uterus. Um, that, along with massage, most of the time will take care of it. If it does not, then we have our next step where we will put a balloon inside to put pressure against the uh, the lower part of the uterus, which is usually where the acne or relaxation is. If that doesn't work, um, we have another step to go. We can uh, embolize where we have gel foam put through the vessels to decrease the blood flow to the uterus. This is just temporary. It actually only lasts a couple of days, the gel foam, um, but it's enough time for the uterus uh, to contract down um, and stop the bleeding and people can keep their uterus. Uh, and um, even though we don't have a lot of literature, what happens after that, um, most people do fine after they've had gel foam. So um, we have that. There is an occasion where we can't do that. Um, either they're not stable, we're not getting it under control, and so once in a while someone will have to have a hysterectomy. We really try to avoid that, especially for people who aren't done having their children, and most of the time we can avoid that. Uh, our hospitals are very well prepared for postpartum hemorrhage. We have what's called a code RBC. So if there's um, bleeding happening, we call that early. Um, we have a whole team from the blood bank who comes down with all the blood products we need um, and we give it in waves and there's a protocol for that. So um, the key to postpartum hemorrhage is acting on it quickly. Um, so that's what we do and we do very well. Okay, thank you, doctor. Yeah, I've seen a postpartum hemorrhage in the uh, whole hospital and heard the they broadcast uh, the cold, the cold, cold RBC. blue RBC and the yeah. and then yeah, and the finally one went yes. pretty good. Yes, I had a postpartum yeah. hemorrhage two days ago. I know you did, <laughs> but I didn't have to call a code RBC. Yeah, and also I know that in some small hospitals <coughs> they don't have to the they don't are they are not able to do the UAE. The uterine uh, embolization. Yeah. Yes, both of our hospitals have that. We have um, interventional radiology, that who, that's who does it, and mm -hmm. both of our hospitals. So as long as the patient is stable, the patient has to be stable, stable. to go down there. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to bring an unstable patient down there. If you do that, mm -hmm. that's when you get into disaster. Mm -hmm. so you have to make the right decision quickly. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, we have lots of protocols. I'm doing this for a very yeah. long time, so we Yeah, we I've know. seen how fast the hospital acts. Mm-hmm.